It's done. Oh my god, it's done. It's so done. <laughs> I'm done. Welcome to Drupal Guitars. I'm Chris. And I'm Matt. And we are here finally in our uh, freshly remodeled workshop, the main workshop, because yep. now we're going to have two of them. We have spent the last six months, no, six weeks. Yeah. It feels it, like six months. Feels like six years. <laughs> yeah. It was the worst. Yeah. It was actually the worst thing that I've ever done in my entire life. Wait, you've had kidney stones, right? <laughs> I have. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this was worse. This is it. This is the final video where we get to show you um, what the full shopper model looks like. Um, yeah. Those of you guys who have been watching us at home, the real diehard fans, those of you that like watch every single video we put up, first of all, we thank you. Second of all, you are a little bit more caught up to speed uh, in understanding the why and the what we have done. Mm -hmm. But in this video, we want to go over all of the little things, all of the things that we've done in this shop. We've got all kinds of cool, like really nicely thought out ideas that are super useful for those of you that are yeah. home who are working out of your garages just like us. But let's back up for just a second because all of this goes back to God, I would even say a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, you guys have all seen it. You noticed that we haven't been as active on YouTube as we used to be. And a big reason of that is, is because thank God for you guys, um, our business has really taken off since yep. we started getting on YouTube. Uh, we launched the electric guitars. Um, and I ended up getting into a situation where it was like, we need to build electric guitars because that's what's going to keep the lights on. Mm -hmm. But I also need to be building acoustics because I have a five year wait list. Um, and, and it got to this point where it was either we're tooled up for acoustics or we're tooled up for electrics, but we can't do both. Right. You just can't do both. And then whenever you watch your YouTube video, you have to put all that away to get the camera gear out and to get whatever yes. the subject of the video is. So, and yeah. no matter what I was doing, I felt bad about it because I, if I was doing one thing, I, I should be doing this other thing too. Mm -hmm. So Matt kind of uh, is a much better business person than me, let's be honest. Uh, he was like, listen, we need to sit down and really figure out where our bottlenecks are. And the reality of it is, the entire shop was a bottleneck. The only thing that stayed in this shop is the paint booth, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. And so we really spent some time before we remodeled thinking about what it is that we need this place to be. And the reality of it is, we realized we need to turn our two-car garage into a guitar building factory. Actually, someone made a comment a while back about um, the, the the movie about the McDonald's. Uh, yeah, what was that I, called? I can't remember what it's called. Someone will tell us in the comments. Anyways, um, it, it's funny. I, I have seen that movie. That was not where we uh, originally, like, that wasn't really where the idea came about, but it's funny, John, that's working with us now, he's worked in the restaurant industry, and I, you know, love engineering and, and, and that whole streamlining of processes and stuff, so it really, it, it's going to feel a lot like that. If they can move 65 billion hamburgers, I think they might have figured something out well, listen, you know they just put that on the sign though they put it on the sign okay like how are we supposed to it's a weird flex it's a weird flex right yeah <laughs> but before we do um kind of get really into it i do want to give a gigantic shout out to stumac yep um they have been stumac's always been a company that i knew by peripheral anybody who works on guitars knows about stumac and then my wildest dreams i never thought that i'd actually work with them we went up there in october of last year i loved it and they were so gracious when we told them that we were doing this shop remodel to basically outfit us with basically whatever we needed yeah. essentially um just it's been a really incredible experience um uh, so you're going to see a lot of stumac tools in this shop Probably more than half of them I did buy on my own over the years, but they've definitely set us up with all kinds of really amazing tools that are not just going to show up in this episode, but in all the episodes going forward. Yep. So um, thank you, Stumac. Thank you, Stumac. Yep. But with that, I think what I want to do is we're going to start off in the very first spot where a guitar is going to go, and it's a raw piece of wood, and we're going to take you through the whole process in the workshop. And then uh, hopefully that'll give you a good idea of what it is and why it is that we did. So with that, let's get to it. Alright, the very first thing you'll notice and the biggest thing is that the CNC machine has been relocated over to this corner. Um, at first, we were kind of of the mindset that we don't need to move the CNC machine. Why not? It's worked really great for, the, for us for years in that spot. But the more we thought about it, we realized that by moving the machine, we're going to get quite a few benefits. Remember, the CNC machine is the very first stop of a guitar um, in its process of becoming a guitar. It's the first stop where the wood goes. Um, and with that, it's one of the dustiest and noisiest things that we have in the shop. So we realized by putting it over in the corner, what it's going to do is kind of get it away from everything as much as it possibly can in a two car garage. Um, and where it used to be the biggest thing, the biggest problem that we had is that it was just on the outside of my paint booth. So what, what we had is a situation where the dustiest machine that I had was constantly kicking up dust. And then if I was doing the machine as well as painting a guitar at the same time, there was a really high likelihood that we were going to end up getting a lot of sawdust into the paint booth. Even though there's good filters and everything on that wall, 
you just ended up inevitably going to get dust in there. So moving it over to here got a lot of that dust away from the paint booth. It opened up a lot more floor space inside the shop for more workbenches. And honestly, I just, I love it. I wasn't super crazy about it at first, but I absolutely love the fact that this area of the workshop now kind of has its own little cubbyhole feel to it. So um, if you're running the machine, you kind of got your own spot to do that. Um, so one of the things we had to do was redirect all of our dust collection. That was a very common theme in the shop. Um, I seem to always want to get into my attic in August. I don't know why I always do remodeling things in August, but it was the worst thing ever. It, I think I, lo I literally lost 10 pounds, I think, on the week that we did all the attic work. It was just terrible. <laughs> um, but the other thing that we did is we added a French cleat wall over here. Uh, and it's something you're going to see a whole lot of in this, this factory shop tour is that we have French cleats absolutely everywhere. Thank God for Matt for bringing the French cleat up. Uh, as an idea, you really did. You, you, I think it was. I think it was you, but yeah. But yeah. I definitely I fell in love with it and ran with it. Yeah, so, you did. Yeah. Um, but what we ended up adding over here was a nice standing desk. Um, we didn't have enough room for a full desk as much as I really kind of wanted, like an area where you could sit down and and do like um, you know the CAD programming and things like that. We didn't really need it. So there's a nice little standing desk and another secondary monitor where you can run Mach four on it, so that when the CMC machine is operating. Um, you can still clearly see what um, order of operations is going on on the machine. Um, all of the French cleats gave us an opportunity to add all of these little separate trays that we made um, for different CNC bits. Right now they're kind of arranged in a way that's like these are all V-carve bits and another one will be just end mills. But as we start to really start knocking out all these title casters and future electric guitars, what we're going to be able to do is make trays that have all of the bits for a specific instrument, which is going to make it really nice over here. You're not going to be sorting and looking around for different bits. Um, we ended up running more vacuum over here, so this is a vacuum line. I still need to run my compressed air over here. Uh, another thing that we were able to add that made life a lot easier was this tiny little stereo receiver that we have. We like to listen to music. We watch a lot of YouTube in here. Um, and it used to be that we had this giant Yamaha receiver um, that we'd have to fiddle with to get all the music going. But this is just a nice old school analog tiny little receiver. Um, it's like 100 watts. We'll put a link to it below. It's freaking awesome. Uh, and we just love it. And the last thing, and Matt was all in a tussy about this, is where is the locker going to go, Chris? Uh, and uh, French cleats, man. French cleats. I just stuck a French cleat on the back of this thing and we hung it up. Uh, and it's really nice. It kind of shocks me sometimes when I walk into the shop now from the outside because it's literally the first thing you see is this giant locker. But uh, I absolutely do love it. And what I like about it actually is the locker makes it more of like a cubbyhole feel over here. And it feels really nice. So, so with that said, this is the very beginning spot of where all of our electric guitars are going to begin to take life. And what we need to do now is move over to uh, kind of our, our longest workbench that we have in here. And you'll see where all of the storage for all of the wood and all the guitars are going to go. And then the assembly line process as it moves down from there. Okay, so we just left the CNC machine. And uh, I guess if that's, if that's where the guitars are born, then this is guitar daycare over here, right? So <laughs> we have a lot of, um, there's going to be some blank stock that lives up here. Obviously, this is kind of more dedicated for necks. And this will be dedicated for bodies. And here, just um, kind of coincidentally, we have some guitars that are mid-process. So this is what some guitars are going to look like coming off the CNC machine. This is uh, after they've been routed and flush cut and cleaned up a little bit. And then basically, as we move down this really long workbench, you're going to kind of follow the life cycle of a guitar. We're hoping that this gets rid of any bottlenecks where like, we can store guitar bodies up top. And then as we want to work on them, we just reach up, grab them, pull them down, right? We have French cleats all along here so that we can have like a certain amount of modularity for our different tools uh, holding sources. The other thing we have, obviously, is our trusty Festool under here. And basically, as the guitar moves down, it's going to get more and more refined, and it's going to become less and less a $45 block of wood and more and more closer to the title caster or whatever electric guitar that we all know and love. So if you remember our old workbench, it was six feet long. This one is 16 feet long. Obviously, a lot more workspace. We've got so much more room for anything, really. There's going to be a lot of sanding that happens here, and I don't know if you can tell. We've got our old trusty uh, dispenser, and it's now been uh, mounted on cleats. We've got glue. We've got sanding. Um, we main reason we love this French cleat design is that you don't have to be married to anything. You can pick things up, move them around, and you'll see a lot of that. Our uh, tape dispenser, which... I made. You did. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
So, you know, Fizzle also now, if I want to take this over to uh, the soldering station or the CNC, wherever, it, it can do that freely. Um, French leaves are just great. Like, they really are. Um, yeah. Anyways, but so we're moving down. You can see here before we had kind of some chemical storage underneath here, and there might still be some of that, but we now also have all of these really awesome drawers. Uh, they're close at hand. Um, a lot of stuff uh, we're not we're still trying to figure out where everything goes as we continue to work in here and eventually it'll have a home where we'll have like i don't know a really good idea of where something needs to be right whenever you want to reach for it that's kind of a big part of this whole process too is i don't want to ever have to be working and then in the middle of trying to get some work done spend 30 minutes looking for a tool and a lot of that was happening in the old shop and that's kind of a big time waste one of the things that that we added behind this wall was um vacuum ports we've got vacuum here vacuum there um we want to try and keep it all nice and clean and tidy that was chris i don't know he's he's all about the looks you it's know gotta look good yeah, it's gotta look good it's gotta look good <laughs> you got you gotta flex you gotta flex a little bit right Moving down, we've got some chemical storage up here. Uh, we love these vintage style um, Sure Shots. They're great. Um, and uh, let's see what else we got. We've got shop towel dispenser up here, or as Chris likes to call them, tissues. <laughs> Do I call them tissues? <laughs> you, oh, oh, yeah, you use them. Yeah, <laughs> the man has allergies. Okay. <laughs> um, and then in this corner over here, you can see there are some bodies that Chris has been working on for some acoustic guitars. For at least the time being, this is going to be kind of where Chris lives. Uh, he'll keep working on some acoustic stuff because the shed is going to be where all that lives. But right now the shed is uh, horrifying. There's a lot of stuff that's out there. And we needed to get back to work. We needed to make a little bit of money. We needed to uh, fulfill some orders. So that's why we're taking a pause on that right now. But in the meantime... Chris has his own little dedicated space here that he can get his acoustic stuff done. We have a window so he can get plenty of vitamin D and sunlight. This sounds very. You, sounds like you're putting me down, buddy. I, I, I think I'm. <laughs> I'm only. Uh, I'm only comparing you to a house plan. That's not really a bad thing. Okay. Um, we got to make sure we feed and water him twice a week. Okay. He gets ample sunlight over here. And um, but yeah, and uh, lots of room for his stuff right now. Uh, glue caddy, which again, love this Show modularity. Yeah. Like, oh. We're, I don't know if you can tell, we're pretty excited about the French cleats. We're pretty excited about the French cleats, so. All right, as we come down that side of the workshop and the workbench actually ends, we end up in the corner, the only corner in the whole shop that still actually looks the same. The dust collector and the bandsaw are the only two machines that we didn't move. Well, this got moved like six inches that way. But, uh, so it is very similar. Uh, they're giant machines that we only had so many places that we could go with them. Something you will notice that's a little bit different is this really cool American flag. Um, Part of my like background of making things um, stems from my great-grandfather and my grandfather. And so it was important to me that I put something in this shop that was his. And this American flag is actually a 48 star flag um, from a buddy of his. Um, and he gave it to me before he passed away, uh, gosh, 22 years ago. Um, I've had this flag forever and it's never really had a nice place to go. Um, and, uh, you know, we are very prideful of the fact that we, these are handmade guitars made here in America. And it was just a really cool serendipitous thing for me to be able to hang this up, for me to have something of his back here in this corner. It's a hand-stitched flag and it's just really beautiful. And I'm excited and proud to have it. All right, because we didn't move the bandsaw, that didn't mean we didn't want to actually do any improvements to it. Um, Matt and I were watching a video the other day where somebody was talking about, oh, I'm too lazy to change out my bandsaw blade, so it's really, I, I leave my resaw blade on, uh, so it's hard to make sharp curves when I could just change the blade out. I'm super guilty of that um, when I do have many other bandsaw blades. So we built this really cool bandsaw blade holder. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and now, in theory, uh, I probably still won't, but in theory, I should be able to now just quickly change out my bandsaw blade so that when I want to do something that has tight curves to it, I can do that. Um, uh, we actually had new electricity run over here. That's something we haven't even talked about. Before all of this happened, we had a major electrical issue in the shop. Almost burnt my house to the ground, uh, and it kind of kicked off the shop remodel. But everything that you see in here actually is all run to its own dedicated power now. Every single tool has its own circuit that it's on, and so we're good. We're not going to burn anything down. Um, but with that, we do have many of the power drops on this side. Um, but this whole wall is going to be 
I wouldn't say necessarily part of the assembly line process, but it is the side of the shop where all of the sawdust, the big heavy sawdust is made. It's kind of the wood processing section of the shop. So bandsaw, you get it. It's a bandsaw. What I'm going to do is we're going to move a little bit further down the line here and I'll show you some of the things that we've added as well. All right, like I mentioned when we were talking about the CNC machine, one of the big pieces of machinery that I had to move in the shop was the drum sander, which really is... Wouldn't you say, Matt, probably one of the number one used power tools in this shop, one of the biggest number one machines. Maybe except for the drills, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we use this thing absolutely all the time, so it was super important that we find a spot to put it where we can actually maximize its usage. In the old spot, we were only able to, to run a four-foot piece of wood through it before it would bump into the wall of where the, um, where the paint booth is. So by moving it over here, um, what we actually were able to do is make it so that we can still just run four foot pieces through it. But if we really need to run long pieces, like say, I don't know, eight foot pieces through it, we can now do that. The really cool design of this Powermatic drum sander is that it's on wheels only in one direction. So with just two fingers, I think this is a 400 pound machine, if I remember correctly. I can just take it and slide it out, which is a really nice feature for us because what that does is kind of gets it out of the way of the bandsaw and then opens up both sides of the machine for us to run long pieces through it. So that's really nice. We did have to, once again, rerun our dust collection to make all of this work. But uh, in the end, um, it's actually a better situation with dust collection here. The runs are much shorter, and I think that our dust collection is actually a lot more efficient. And to carry on our French cleat theme, we can see that's all back here behind us. Um, it, hey, the more we added French cleats, the more I actually just fell in love with the look of it. It actually made the, the whole shop, I think, feel a lot lighter. Uh, and it looks really nice. But Matt spent some time over engineering uh, a lot of French cleats. So I don't know if you can see this this one over here. We'll give you some close ups of it. But it's got like a honeycomb lightweight reduction little look to it. We kind of had fun with some of the French cleats and spent some time on it. Um, we've got all of our dust collection um, holds over here. This downdraft port over here is not only our dust collection for our bandsaw, but it actually is just our general purpose dust collection to be able to do floor sweeping and things like that. Um, cam clamps, we've got parallel clamps and F clamps. And then as we move further down, we've actually got storage over here for our um, more sandpaper for our drum sander. And then the edge sander used to be right here, and we moved it further down this way. Um, something that was always a problem with our edge sander in the past is it became very difficult to see. Um, years ago, I ended up buying a Laguna um, lathe, and I don't use it very often, but I do love it. But what we ended up what I ended up really falling in love with was the light that's on it. So I ended up getting another one of those lights and mounted it to the wall. And we have a nice light source over here for our edge sander and it makes it really, really nice. Um, and we carried around the whole shop continuing on with our upper shelving area as a space for us to be able to um, store a lot of our raw lumbers and things like that. A lot of the wood you guys see up here is actually gonna be going away and into the acoustic shop once that's finished as well. But uh, we ended up putting some paint on it, right? And that looks really nice. We only had one wall left that actually wasn't completely covered up by French cleats, so we figured why not sling some paint on it. Uh, and it just makes it feel a little bit more uh, cozy and comfortable in here, uh, which is super important for making you want to come into work every single day. Okay, the very last spot in our shop that we have yet to show you is um, kind of, it's becoming quickly, and I've said this a couple times already, but my favorite spot in the whole workshop. This is uh, the clean area, the spot where we're gonna do kind of the final setups, the soldering and all of that stuff. And Matt has had so many really cool ideas on things that we could do to make this area as turnkey and as um, kind of few things to think about and set up as humanly possible. Uh, and I couldn't be more excited to, to show you guys a lot of the things that are going on over here, but I'm gonna have Matt show you because this is gonna be kind of where Matt lives. It's going to be Matt's house, if you will. <laughs> yeah. this, is, this is the new radiator that Chris is going to chain me to. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's kind of start over here and work our way around, right? This is where we're going to get all of our strings for our acoustics and electrics. And Chris came up with this design. Um, I'm proud of it for him. I, I only wish I was smart enough to come up with it. Basically, whenever we get, um, whenever we order strings in bulk from Stumac, they come in these boxes, and those are great, but there's kind of some... Uh, wasted space. We weren't really sure how to store them, but if you pull that box open, there's a tube inside that all these strings are inside. So Chris pulled the tube out, built a little uh, very clearly labeled uh, dispenser over here, 
drop that tube in, and now we've got all the strings we need for uh, different gauges, yeah, light, a, heavy. That's 125 sets of strings right there. Yeah, um, all living right here. And so whenever I'm working on a guitar, and getting doing the final string up process, pull the string out, slide it. I've already actually I've already done it once. It's 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 awesome. It's spectacular. <laughs> so. Um, another really fun design thing, uh, Chris found this Spark, I think you you might have at some point gotten a targeted ad for this on Instagram. Uh, these little amps are awesome, like great little practice amps, uh, great tone, and we needed something over here to test guitars out because uh, I'm a human being, sometimes whenever I solder something, I don't get it right the first time. It happens, right? Um, we needed something over here to test guitars. Also, whenever people come over, um, you know, something that just kind of like demo guitars through. So we mounted it on the side here, a little bit of a swivel, right? Which on a French cleat. On a French cleat. <laughs> yeah. Hey, fun drinking game, by the way. How about maybe, guys, you take a sip every time we say French cleat. I don't know. We're just throwing that out there. Um, if you're of an appropriate age. Anyways, uh, I can't remember if this was my idea or Chris's, but we, we love this. This is actually the jack for this amp is no longer up here. Um, a big thing that I wanted to stress in this whole corner, we want to keep things as clean as possible. And I can't tell you like how many times we'd be working in the old shop and you would have a guitar that it's basically, it's, it's worth several thousand dollars now. It's no longer just a small piece of lumber. It is now a guitar that's ready to go out the door. You reach to grab something, you knock something else off a shelf, it falls and it dings the damage and it dings the finish on your guitar. It damages it. It's a whole thing. This area, there is no sawdust made over here. If we could have found a way to hermetically seal this in, we probably would have. We couldn't though, but we have a nice yoga mat here which was someone's comment. Someone Somebody suggested that. We had several comments. We had several comments about the yoga mat. Thank you guys. That's, that was, a, that was a, totally the right call. We've got a yoga mat here, no dust. We want to keep this as clean as possible, right? So I didn't even want a cord running out of this amp and, and falling on the face of the guitar. So plug in right here, and that's where uh, that's how you get noise out of your guitar. I don't know, it's just... It's super cool. It's the little things. Um, yeah, moving along, we've got more storage. We've got all the pickups and all the wiring stuff up here on the top shelf. Um, all your general kind of guitar setup and light repair things. And uh, as we move further down the bench, we've got power here. Sucky McSuckface has now migrated. Sucky McSuckface is now here, right? So as I'm soldering, <laughs> as I'm soldering over here, obviously now I'm not breathing in toxic fumes. I'm not uh, killing brain cells. Not that I have that many to lose anyways. But yeah, we got towels that are uh, our soldering iron over here. I'm just really excited to have this whole space be dedicated to just one purpose. Again, it was such a, a pain in the butt. Whenever a guitar was ready to get set up, we'd have to move guitars in various shapes and forms. You have to move tools. You have to clean the workbench off. Now, this will always be clean. It will always be ready for final setups, repairs, whatever. Also, all down here, we have all sorts of storage. There's gonna be tools, uh, whatever bench stock. These drawers uh, do not have faces yet. On its way, we're working on that. The drawers will have faces, I promise. Um, they're also kind of disorganized right now. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, it, it's, uh, it's still a work in progress. Okay, and another really interesting design concept. This might look a little bit different to some keen eye viewers, and that's because we have here what we affectionately call the wall or the fake wall. The previous thing that we had, this was the intake for the paint booth, and we realized that there was a lot of wasted space there. Clearly, we had a room for storage that we weren't taking advantage of, and, and a, a big impetus for all this was sort of, I think my big design philosophy was if there's room to do something, we want to maximize and eke out every single square inch of storage we possibly can out of most places, and we'll continue to refine that. But this wall right here has an added bonus of not just giving us more storage space, it also is an extra layer of insurance and protection uh, in the paint booth from getting like fine particulate matter. And some, we were having issues with contaminants getting in. The filtration system that Chris had before was working really well, but now it's a lot more secure and it's a lot safer. Um, and we still have some room for airflow to get in. And so we haven't noticed any drop necessarily in the intake, but we have noticed more protection. So all good things. Uh, if we move down here, Come with me if you will. So here we have um, these drawers that are comically small. Um, <laughs> I, I love them. Uh, don't get me wrong, I, I'm giving Chris a hard time about it. But they are small, A, because we wanted to have drawers here, but B, they need to be because we have here our company fridge. Um, already festooned in stickers and decals. Um, and inside we have a uh, granola bar. Oh, a $20 bill. I got that at a tip for a gig the other day. And uh, it was while Chris and I were playing a gig together. And I was like, you know what? 
I think this is a this is a good seed for beer money for the fridge. So it's in there now. Whenever we run out of beer, we're gonna go stock up on that. But anyway, so we got room for lunches, uh, waters, snacks. Um, you know, beers at the end of the day, which I think as soon as we finish this video, we're probably gonna have a cold one. Yeah, maybe you guys should do that too, uh, if you don't already have one while you're watching this video. But yeah, um, that is pretty much everything that's going on in this corner of the shop. I'm really excited to have a space over here that I can work on guitars. Also, I think I now have room to actually store and work on the amp which what? yeah i know um if you if you've been patiently waiting for the amp video thank you if you've been impatiently waiting for it i'm sorry i don't know if you noticed we've kind of had other things we've had other irons in the fire but i now have a space where i can actually work on it and i don't have to clear it off or make room in the old shop like i was doing it was a big pain in the butt so yeah um amp video hopefully coming soon <laughs> only a year later i guess or whatever you know anyways uh, but now with that i think we're going to move on to the island and we're going to explain our thought process behind that all right and that brings us to sort of the crown jewel of the shop i think it's, in a way a good term. yeah it's definitely uh, it's it's it takes up the most visual space in the shop and it's sort of the first thing you see whenever you walk in from outside or from inside the house and that's the island workbench here and uh Chris pointed out earlier whenever we were talking that it is sort of the world's largest uh, router table, <laughs> yeah. which is awesome, <laughs> actually. But um, it, besides the router that's here that we're going to use for rounding over the guitar bodies and um, doing the binding and things like that, it's also basically the most open-ended part of the shop. Everything else has a very specific purpose and is going to live and die by that purpose. This, we wanted to keep a space open that we could use for uh, whenever we get ready to package things off and send them off to mm. you, which by the way, if you maybe buy a paint handle or a back and side set from our website, link below. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna end its life here before it gets into a box and gets shipped off to you, yeah. right? Um, we've, we've got vices here. Just yesterday, I was working on uh, I was routing some guitar bodies. Um, Chris has done some work on this uh, bench. It it's great. Um, Chris, I know this has been a dream of yours for a long time. This T tracks. I've always wanted to do T tracks. Years ago, I saw I think it was Bourbon Moth, mm -hmm. uh, a fellow YouTuber uh, who's way cooler. than I think me. they know who Bourbon Moth. Yeah. Is. <laughs> yeah. If you don't, uh, yeah. where, where have you been living? <laughs> Call me. Call yeah. me Bourbon. Uh, but I just always wanted T-Tracks because they're just, they take what would normally be an ordinary um, worktop and then basically turn it into almost whatever you want it to be. So we did do this. I designed this out in V-Carve probably a year ago uh, and got all these rails and everything, the T-Tracks at Rockler, including the Jessam router lift. And uh, I think this is Bench Dog who makes the, the miter for the front side there. And uh, we haven't really utilized all the T-Tracks much yet, but we did get all the hold downs that go inside awesome. here. So speak for yourself, like I, I used it just yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's gonna be super, super awesome. Another thing that we did is we got um, Stumac, one of the tools that they gave us, um, I think they gave us four of these pattern maker vices. And so we've got holes on all four corners because I'm the, I'm actually the only right-handed person in the workshop. <laughs> yeah. Everybody, but everybody in my house is left-handed. Matt, John, my son, and my wife are all left-handed. So um, these vices are really cool because they just got a quick wing nut on the bottom. You pop them off, you can stick them where you want, where you're comfortable to work mm -hmm. with. Um, Matt and I kind of, we came up with a compromise. This is like the physical compromise of you and I. Matt really wanted to have open spaces below it instead of having cabinets so that he could put uh, put our boxes and packing tapes and all of those things and just whatever we need could yeah. just be underneath it quickly to access. And I did like that, but I also, um, part of what you, you have noticed as we've gone through the shop is that there aren't any cabinets in this shop. Not a single cabinet because I said right out of the gate, cabinets are just a place where things hide and they collect crap. and They, they go to die and yeah. they take a broom and yeah, you can't get to them quickly. We used to call our retrieval, yeah. all that. Our, yeah. old, our old cabinet, we used to call the Island of Misfit Tools because it was just like that. But I told Matt, I said, listen, you're going to hate me, but I really need at least one cabinet to be able to put like... My um, laminate trimmers, um, the side bending iron, the actual physical iron I use. Yeah. Uh, all these random things that have like long cords on them uh, that you don't use very often, but you need you know you need them to be available. So on this yeah. side of the of the island, I ended up putting this piano hinged door on it. And look, Matt, there's so much good stuff in here already. There's so I, much good dude, stuff. There's so, it's a rat's nest. <laughs> it's already I, turning into a nest, but it's the only spot in the whole shop that there's a nest. This is, like like any good relationship, 
in a year, I think I'm going to be able to say, I told you oh, so. I and I will. I will. I will. <laughs> I will. I will. I'm okay with that. <laughs> Quick poll for the audience. <laughs> Would you rather have at least one spot to hide your crap or no spots whatsoever? It just seems, it's, it's so unimaginative. <laughs> like, you have a wall okay. with cleats, you have yeah. shown, and then, but yeah, and then you're still going to have, anyways. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We put some French cleats on that side. That's been like a really, that's been a fun little life hack. Just um, yes. it, it, pretty much anywhere you have a flat surface, if you can throw a cleat on it, it, it kind of honestly almost makes sense to do it just mm -hmm. because you never, you don't even know that you need it. Um, the cleats that we have over here, they're great for tape dispensers. I just use the yesterday wall as a gluing binding onto a guitar. It's right yeah, there, yeah. right at uh, hip height. Um, we've got some open shelves down here. That's where just like some packing materials and maybe uh, some blank stock, some lumber, any, anything we want can live under there. Yeah, and um, then the, um, the router is all set up with good emergency stops on it extension cords that run out the side and then proper dust collection all built in so it's just super nice turnkey ready to go yeah um, we didn't run separate power to the island because we would have had to cut through the concrete to do that but uh it's super awesome and this island i think at least for me is probably pretty much the number one used spot in the shop and it's gonna it's gonna patina really nicely that's what i'm most excited about with this workshop is right now it's we're in that weird phase especially everybody's a guitar fan on this channel uh yeah. when you got the brand new guitar and you don't want to scratch it up and then yeah, once you get a couple yeah. of scratches on it you're like eh, okay now we're good uh -huh, uh -huh. we gotta get over the hump i gotta get some glue on here and some some stains and yeah. like all the crap, uh, it'll happen. It, it doesn't will. look lived in right now. No, it will. It, it will not. It won't take long. But with that, I hope that you guys have enjoyed this, um, that it maybe gave you guys some ideas on things that you could do at your house as well. I know for yeah. me personally, I started out of a one-car garage, so I mean, we all gotta make do with what we have. That's right. Um, and if you guys see anything that uh, that you think that we can improve on, um, please don't tell us. <laughs> Because we're so much work to get here. But that being said, actually, I mean, no, for real. If you see something that that you think that you would change or something that you don't like, leave us a comment about that too. Because it, it is still a work in progress. Yeah. Obviously, there are a few things that we need to finish up and a couple loose ends. But uh, we're by no means really done. Um, a lot of this process will continue to streamline itself yeah. as we work out here. We're so. going to put links to as many things as we can think of that we've pointed out in this video below too. We'll see y'all in the next one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks a lot. Thanks all.